So I found that a lot of PhD students and researchers that kind of reach out to us for help and talk to us, like really struggle with not writing and with procrastination. And, you know, the great researchers, the great in the lab, they know how to do the research, but they're not writing. And this is exactly what we're going to be talking about today with Shami. Because if I remember right, when you first talked to me about three months or four months ago in November 2023, that was kind of your situation, Shami, right? That you were excellent in the lab, you were doing all your research, all your experiments, but you weren't writing. Can you tell us a little bit more about, you know, what was happening at that time? Yeah, so by November, I reached out to Marek uh, with an issue that I had that was that I was not uh, effective in terms of planning. I wasn't doing much writing. I wasn't doing much reading, but I was uh, focused on my experiments. I was doing a lot of lab work, but I just felt that all that lab work that I was doing and all that data that I was getting was not being analyzed, was not being processed. I wasn't discussing my findings and I was just accumulating data on top of, of data without being strategic about it and that was the main issue that i had and i wanted to get some writing done and my deadline was getting closer and closer and, and i found this program and i was this is probably one of my best shots in order to fix this issue that i have what why do you think that that happens because it sounds like you you were able to plan in the lab and you were very good at doing the experiments, which of course involves a lot of planning and managing your time and stuff like this. Why why did it happen that you weren't as good at planning your writing? I think because in, in, in the program in, in itself, uh, Marek talks about how we tend to label ourselves as a certain person, as I'm a bad writer, I'm a bad planner, I'm a bad whatever that might be. And I knew that I struggled a lot writing and I knew that I was good in the lab. So I just decided to divert my focus to where I was good at and then neglect the writing part. But the writing part kept piling up and up and up. And the pressure was very, very intense. So in that moment, I was like, I need to do something about this because no matter how many experiments I do, if I don't write about them, if I don't present them in a coherent, logical and structured way, then I'm not getting my thesis. So I think it was just a matter of, I know I'm not good at this. I really dislike it. It's very uncomfortable. So I'll just do what I'm good at. And just and just be in the lab. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose it's it's about, you know, any change is, is kind of painful, right? And yes. as human beings, I think we naturally just want to avoid what's painful. And we're going to continue doing Absolutely. what's easier Absolutely. for us. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, so how, how did you then make that change? Because it is, it is difficult, right? To, to change it, your deeply ingrained habits. And it sounds like, yeah, you, you weren't writing for a very long time. So how, wh what did you do to break out of this kind of writing procrastination? I think the, the secret here lies in, in the program in itself. Cause the, initially I thought the program was only about writing and getting your writing on point and, and, and being effective at it. But in week two of the program, there's a module called the, uh, I think it's emotional training or emotional mindset. And it's uh, five or six modules on dealing with your emotions, on beating procrastination, on being more effective mainly. And that was the thing that I was lacking. I didn't know, or I, maybe I, I knew it, but I just wanted to avoid it. And then if I don't confront that problem and if I don't take action, as you keep on emphasizing, then that's not going to be solved. So I think what I needed to know was, look, this is your issue. You can't keep running away from it. You need to tackle it. And the, the only way to tackle it is by taking action. So that was probably the eye-opening moment for me. And what, what sort of actions did you, did you take? Can you give like a, a concrete example maybe of something that, that you yeah. did? Because I suppose there are a lot of PhD students who are exactly in the same situation, that they're just not writing. So what, what did you do exactly? What was that action? One, one of the most effective things that I've been taught in this program, and, and it's, it was in, I think, in week one in the module about, uh, well, regulating your time and, and just being effective in, in, in the lab and in your PhD and everything. The, I think probably the thing that has been most beneficial for me has been having a calendar, planning my days and not only planning my days, but doing something that I didn't do before having a long-term view of the year that I have left. 
So now it's probably six months until I'm done. And just by probably last month or no, maybe this was in December. I came up with a calendar for the last six months and that gave me an incredible sense of clarity. Clarity and, and, and just that certainty of knowing what I'm doing. And that to me has been a game changer because now I know that I have, let's say, 36 weeks left. In the first four weeks, I need to focus on doing experiments related to a certain cell, cell line that I'm looking. After that month, I will have done that. Then I need to move on onto the next experiments. And at the same time, I plan some time for reading and then I try to squeeze in some time for writing. And in the bigger picture, having that view of the next six months, the next year, detailed out, knowing what to do, when to do it, how to do it. That's amazing, honestly. Yeah. So what you, it sounds like in that calendar, you put specifically like your, your research activities, but also what needs Absolutely. to get written. And you started blocking Absolutely. your calendar for that. Absolutely. And using time blocks, like from 10 to 12, I'll be away. I won't be in the lab. I'll be in the library. I'm sorry, I'm not available. And that time I'm focusing, I'm doing my writing and I cannot be disturbed. And using those time blocks, honestly, it's my productivity sky rises. My <laughs> focus is different. It's on a different level. It's uh, getting rid of, of, of distractions, which are not only the phone or social media or whatever. It's people coming to your desk and asking you something and hearing uh, people making some coffee or something. But I'm in the library. I'm focused. It's a silent place. No distractions. Get my work done and then go back. So that's uh, what has been very helpful, inserting those time blocks into my schedule. Love it. That that really resonates with me because, yeah, that's that's what I do when I need to get some some work done. Like, for example, this morning I was... I was doing some um, some kind of writing work. And yeah, I just came to the co-working space that we have here in the building and there's nobody here ever. So I just, I just sit down and mm. yeah, it's a comfortable space. It's quiet. I put on my headphones Absolutely. and Absolutely. then I do it, you know, because yeah, when I go back home, I mean, I've, we've got a 10 month old baby. So there's always, there's always something going on, you know? So like having that space where it's like quiet and you can focus on something that really skyrockets productivity. Definitely. Mm -hmm. That's, that's an awesome tip. And, and I know you've been working like directly with, uh, with Latanya, who's one of our client success mm -hmm. managers. Uh, so how, how has that helped with, I suppose, beating procrastination and managing your time? Because sometimes we kind of know what to do. And I think, people watching this might think yeah sure i need to plan things okay but then they don't actually do it <laughs> you know what i mean so has has that been helpful as well like to have somebody on your side kind of in your corner keeping you accountable yeah when i when i first uh, contacted you one of the things that i was very interested in was having that accountability having someone behind me being like you said you were gonna write uh, an overview of the introduction on friday friday has come you haven't done it why that's what I wanted. And because otherwise, if, yeah, I know I need to do things. I know I need to write. I know I need to read and everything. But if there's no one behind me chasing me, which shouldn't be the case, but to be fair, I think that's how PG, PhD students are nowadays. We need that external accountability. And I've been getting it from my coach. She's been chasing me. She's been asking questions. She's been providing some feedback. And at the end of the day, that has been someone, there's been someone with me showing me the way, asking me questions, wondering why haven't you done this? You said you were going to do it. Were your goals realistic? Because that, that's something that I, I didn't know at the time. I was like, I need to do, I don't know, read five papers and write uh, a mini chapter of the introduction and do three experiments. And then I look at myself and I'm like, there's no way I can do that. It's just too much. So so having that external someone looking at your goals and being like, this sounds like it's too much. Are you sure you can do this? So that, that was also very helpful. Awesome. So what since since then, since joining, what what have you been able to to write? I know there's been an abstract that you've submitted, but can you tell us a little bit more about yeah, that that writing that you've done? Yes, yeah, so I've mainly focused on uh, the introduction. Uh, there was this chapter that I wanted to get done. Uh, it was an extension of my confirmation report that I was told my my advisors that I needed to include some more information. So I, I've been working on that extension of the introduction. I gave uh, my coach uh, an overview of what, I, of what I wanted to write regarding the introduction. 
I split that in subsections, as, as you taught us in the week three modules uh, regarding how to write introduction, how to split it, the research questions, the aims. So I split that between different subsections that I wanted to incorporate. Then I extended uh, what I wanted to add. And then now I have a considerable chunk of, uh, of uh, chapter that is almost uh, ready to go. And I'll be including in, in my introduction. So that's uh, quite helpful. Nice. Nice. And you mentioned that you've got six months to, to finish. So what's the plan? What, what, what do you still have plans to, to write? Yeah. So plans next are finish the results chapter. So that will incorporate everything I've been doing in this uh, past uh, three months and everything that is left to, to add, which is uh, quite substantial still. But uh, the main focus on, on these days was finishing that chapter because I, I do need to, to finish it before I write it. I can always write the outline and what to expect and the conclusions, but I need the actual figures. I need the actual data because that will determine the discussion, that will determine everything. So that's what's left, uh, finishing the results chapter, getting all the data, then the discussion, conclusion, and, and that's it. Nice, nice. That sounds That sounds very doable and it really sounds like now... Yeah, you've got everything planned out. So what, what would you say to, to those PhD students who, who keep on postponing their writing? Because that's something that I hear time and time again. Like, I will write when I finish reading. I will write when I've collected all my data. I will write when I've analyzed my data. What, what would you say to, to them? I, I can empathize with these students because I, I myself was one of those. that was like, I can't write because I haven't read enough. So then I need to read more, but then I wouldn't read. So then the writing would be postponed and that endless cycle would take forever. And, and, and no writing would get done because I didn't read. So I thought I wasn't prepared. So then no writing would get done. And that feedback would feed itself on those negative thoughts that oh, I write because I haven't read enough. I don't know how to write and so on and so on and so on. And that leads to nowhere. It just leads to, to feeling um, very miserable it just you, you don't feel good you know that you should be writing you're not writing you, you convince yourself that you're not ready and then you just keep postponing that forever but it's it's not the way to go like what you taught us is that you want to write we all want to write but you can't just read for one month and then write because you're gonna forget everything so you just read while you write and then you slowly build up that thesis and, and and that's the way to go to read and write at the same time so i suppose the main message is just start writing today just stop watching yeah. this youtube yeah, video yeah. and I start mean, writing it's extremely simple everyone knows it but at the end of the day no one tells you what you should do you already know what you should do it's just that you don't want to do it it's uh, <laughs> it hurts to say it it's uh, very obvious but that's that's the reality at the end of the day we all know what we should do now if you want our personalized help to, to help you write an excellent PhD thesis or publish papers in Scopus Index journals, then book a free one-to-one -one consultation. And the link is right below this video. We'll get on a one-to-one -one call with you and we'll identify the root cause of your current challenges with academic writing. And then we'll also help you to achieve your goals faster. And the link to book that one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video.